everybody, it's Hussein Kabani, your favorite broker, and we're back with Vern. Thanks for having me, Hussein. No worries, man. So uh, Vern is our go-to mortgage specialist, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of an update. Sure. And obviously, we're going to start off with the question that everyone would the have probably asked you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, where do we see interest rates? Where do we see them going? I mean, obviously, we didn't have a reduction in April. There's no meeting in May. No. Where do you see this going? So based on my readings and following the economists, uh, they're predicting a 54% chance of a rate cut in June okay. and a 100% chance of rate cut in July. So do you think they might do both or do you think it's... Uh, it also depends on what the U.S. numbers are going to come in as True. well. Like we don't have the U.S. Uh, CPI number yet. Yeah. Um, so that's also going to have a huge impact as well. Right. Uh, so if it's not June, probably maybe it get pushed to July. More than likely it's going to happen in July yeah. if it doesn't happen in if June. If it doesn't happen and in June. And I guess depending on the numbers, there could be a possibility where they might do in June. back to back. Yeah, back to also. back. Yeah, that could be very possible. And well. what do you think like in terms of reduction rates? Probably quarter percent. Quarters, right? Yeah. They'll probably go slow, steady slow. and kind it's of going to be slow it out cut. until... Only thing is good, looks promising is the uh, unemployment number yeah. and also the CPA numbers that came out as well, the co-inflation is done. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, like if we go with this theory, like do you, like, I mean, we're sitting at 5% right now. Correct. Uh, where do you think that it could be at the end of the year? We could be closer to 4%. So you think even by the end of the year, there could be a chance of reduction of like 1% yeah. of the rate? That's could my be. assumption. Yeah, yeah. could be. Uh, like, like, say for right now, like, and what would that actually translate into a product, right? Like, I know the fixed rates have already kind of gone down. And I, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it is, I don't want to say common, but it's likely that on a five year fixed rate, you could get like 499 right yeah, now. Yeah, correct. Yeah, the five, one, three year, you can get, like, it's, is it it's, three it's years as well? It's three years as well. It's okay. fluctuating between the bond yields based on the inflation okay. numbers and the predictions. Yeah. Anyway, we are from uh, 4.99 to like a 5.14. That's not bad. On a three years. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad years. at all compared yeah. to where we were before. Correct, yeah. Um, and the five years are below 5% for sure. Okay. Um, and, and then like, so if we do see like a one point reduction, like how do you see that impacting the rates like to the consumer? I think it's going to be impacting a lot of people's mindset. Yeah. Emotions more yeah. than um, actual what's going to dollar happen. Value. Dollar value. Yeah. right? Everyone thinks the market is moving in the right direction. But also we talked about it as well. We have a high inventory as well. Correct, so yeah. I don't know what that's going to be leading into house prices. Yeah. Uh, but it's definitely going to give more confidence to the buyers who is on the fence. And they don't they're not sure, they're probably waiting. Yeah. It's going to be definitely going to bring some confidence back into yeah. the market. Like like I think like we were talking earlier before we started recording, like the inventory is much higher and it seems like it's probably gonna continue to build based on what we're seeing in terms of sales right now. So that might also give a more of a, a motivation, like you're saying. Like I think the prices probably will stay stagnant if the inventory continues to be where it is and sales don't pick up, possibly come down. And, and then if the rate comes down, like, I mean, that's gonna be a huge option, opportunity for buyers. And in my opinion, with what's going on with the budget as well, even the price goes up with the rate comes down, yeah. a lot of investors are maybe coming back into the market because they may want to cash up. True, yeah. Uh, I mean, also because of the capital gains, capital gains. Uh, increases and whatnot. Um, in terms of like, uh, of uh, like people being able to renew. Like I think we're gonna to start to see a huge bunch of that start to happen right now too, right? Like the renewals. Absolutely. Um, actually, I'm having a clients reaching out. The renewals are coming up in 2025. They wanna get themselves ready. Yeah. Uh, definitely those are like a two and a half, under 3% mortgages. Correct. Now, at least it's gonna be four, almost 5%. So when you go and run these numbers for them, cause like people are being proactive and they understand like the risk that they're probably gonna be entering into, like, how do they feel about the payments? Are you calculating them out for them and yeah. saying, hey, like, listen, you're paying like three now, it's going to be five. Absolutely. It, like, how do they feel about it? Everyone, every, that's why they're reaching out ahead of time yeah. to see what their plan B but, is. But when you do the numbers, like, are they like, okay, fine, whatever, we could deal with this? Or are they like, no, this is not going to work? A lot of people are having a payment shock. Yeah. Like, I would say about 80% of them are having a really? payment shock. That's a huge number. If you think about it, like... 2019 renewals coming up, 2024, the income have not gone significantly Correct. unless they have a big promotions and they have progress in their career significantly over the next five yeah. years. But if one someone's staying stagnant and their pay, their pay is almost similar to what the industry standard, gas prices has gone up. Uh, cost of living has yeah. gone up. The mortgage rates has gone up. Yeah. Everything has gone up. So yeah. it's definitely going to be a payment shock. And forget about it. Forget about, we, the most important thing is unsecured debt. Correct. So those payments on top of the increased mortgage payment because they were able to float a line of credit and a credit card payment to keep up the lifestyle Correct. going. And now 
mortgage payments are going up as yeah. well. So it's definitely going to be a cash flow crunch. So, so it seems like based on where we are at right now, and things could change over the next little while, but compared to last year, right now, we have like 60% more inventory across the GTA. Correct. So a lot, we're carrying a lot more inventory. I'm noticing sales are actually slower. Yeah. Uh, that's I feel the same as well. I feel the same as well, especially so, over the last uh, three to four weeks. Yeah. Um, number of incoming calls, number of leads. Yeah, because it, it's also like, hey, like, what are these people going to do that need to renew? Do you know what I mean? Like, if they if they're proactive, they call you up like a year in advance or whatever, and you can even like say, even if you use a number of like saying the rates will come down a percent and kind of predict a rate of where they might be on a fixed or a variable rate at that point, and they look at the payment and they're like, I can't actually afford this even in a year. And they want to get out of the market now, like trying to be proactive. But to me, I'm saying the inventory numbers and the sales numbers because. It's it's all already a struggle. So Absolutely. if you have a lot of these proactive people coming onto the market uh, because they know they can't renew in a year, it's going to flood. It's going to be flood the inventory. Yeah, we're going to flood and, it and with inventory. About the what about the investors, right? Yeah. Well, well the capital gain stuff, right? And like uh, initially, like I didn't think of it as much, but you brought up a good point. I forgot about some of the low prices I paid for some of these houses compared to where they are at right now. Like I have a townhouse that I paid like six twenty five or six fifty for, and that's probably around a million dollars right now. So, so that's more than two hundred fifty. So it's one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Like, what yeah. about if someone bought it like a while back? Yeah. The bungalows in Scarborough, like, yeah. all those in investment properties, right? And the other important thing is when you might as well you take the payment cut, right? Like you can get the less price yeah. and pay less capital gain. Yeah. And you don't need to deal with the cash flow net yeah. cost problem, right? Because we did a rough math, right? And our rough math was is that if you'd purchase something for like $250,000 way back in the day, if it's worth a million dollars, maybe the additional tax now moving from 50% to, uh, to yeah, 66.67%. You're going to be about ninety thousand dollars out of pocket. Yeah, out of pocket. So, minus well, you sell it. What? Keep in mind, you need to keep this property and you need to put money out of your pocket. Correct. Because pretty much every investor is injecting cash. So you're already paying out of pocket, and they're telling you that you're going to net out less money on your taxes now because you got to pay that ninety thousand dollars extra because you have a seven hundred. So you rather gain. take a hundred thousand dollar hit and yeah. sell the house right now because you're taking a hit either way. Either way, right? So you're, gonna so you're be, taking a hundred thousand dollar hit. Regardless. You would actually be better off, I think, in the long run. Like if you're feeding that property seven hundred, eight hundred bucks, or whatever else like that. Uh, you might as well just take that hit right hit now. Right, right now, at least you are having in a cash flow. In a year, you're positive. saving hundred thousand dollars in a cash flow. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're actually netting out. Netting out. So I guess this goes back to like the strategy of like you know uh, you got to be you buy, have to buy it right and sell it right and make Absolutely. the tax strategy is part of selling it correctly. Absolutely, you need to talk to an accountant for the uh, professional advice for but sure. In, to, in the comments, is that I will see a lot of investors will come out on the market. So, so this is kind of uh, concerning, I guess, right? Because if a year over year right now we have about sixty percent more inventory, it's actually sixty seven percent more inventory in four one six condos right now. Yeah, sixty seven percent more. I think it was Peel region that actually had uh, Peel or Halton. I forgot. They actually had almost seventy percent more inventory than they had last year as well. In the condos, uh, overall in oh, freehold and okay. condo. The only one I broke down was Toronto freehold holding condo because I've got screwed up on that one before. Yep. Uh, I should probably break down the other regions, but yeah, a lot more inventory. And then these guys coming onto the market that can't afford uh, to continue to hold their houses. And then the investors coming onto the market at the same time. It's, it's, it's going to be, uh, in my opinion, we're going to be flooded with the inventory for the rest of the year. Yeah. The, even though prices comes down, yeah. I mean, the rates comes down, yeah. that's going to be getting a lot of people to come into the market. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we do have those people coming into the market. Otherwise, if we don't have it, then we're going to see the price. We need to wait till everything washed. So yeah. if you really want to hold for the long term, you need to hold for the long term. Yeah. You need to make sure you're buckled up and your budget is in the right place to yeah. keep onto this property. Yeah, hey, you know what? Uh, like, I also think that this, like, uh, for people that are actually trying to buy and sell at the same time, I don't think it should really have an effect on them. If they are actually looking at net numbers, it shouldn't have an effect I on them. I wouldn't say that, Hussein, because actually I got an interesting call this morning that a client of like client, he, he just called me today. The realtor called me to refer a client. They bought a property for 1.6 million, closing on May 2nd. Yeah, they have a townhouse to be sold, no offers. Bro, wrong strategy though, in my opinion, right? Like, you like this is all about watching the market and seeing where it is going, right? So, if I had that client, which I have a client right now that wants to actually sell and like buy a cheaper property, right? They want to downsize, they want to enjoy life a little bit more. But, and we saw a property yesterday that they actually very much like, but I'm like, I don't think you should actually buy this property until we sell your property. Because the selling is right? taking a Yeah, so, so I'm like, hey, you gotta sell your property first in order to move forward. And that I think that's just monitoring the market and saying, hey, can I actually sell this property on time, right? Uh, but a lot of people, they just fall in love in the dream home and you cannot really blame the realtor, but they just fall in love with the house. 100%, and, they just... and, and you know what? Like we had a story like that last year, right? Where, this, where a mutual client of ours fell in love with this yeah. house, right? 
but we laid out the risks yeah. before they went firm on the deal. Like yeah. it was a firm deal, but we had a consultation before they actually they know signed what the up. consequences are. Exactly. And we basically just said, hey, like if if you might not get one four for your property, you might get one two. Like, are you okay with that? Yeah. Like before you firm up on the yeah, deal. Absolutely. So, so it's about doing the due diligence at the same time. Yeah. Um, but what I was gonna say is is that if you do it correctly and uh it might still be okay for you. Like if you're like, I have a client that's looking to move down and, and I have another client that's looking to move up. But if you trade in the same market, you're okay. you should be okay. By the way, it couldn't be like, it couldn't be within days, not even a week. Hey man, we saw that happen from the beginning of March yeah. to middle of March, like beginning of March started different. really hot. And then in mid March, well, March break hit, boom, boom. You're, you're out. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So yeah, the, like it's an interesting thing about inventory and sales that it's happening is gonna affect definitely the buyers coming in and the pricing in the market. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on was, is it's actually huge breaking news and we've talked about it before and we never understood why they didn't do it before, right? Well, we kind of did, but yeah. they should have done it, which is... When my Leoni Rolson asked me that. Really? <laughs> yeah? Why didn't they do it before? Yeah, so... I was and what the, are we talking about? We're talking about oh, uh, basically... Digital income verification. Exactly, yeah. So like, why can't the lender just go directly to CRA system and at least verify line 150? It's happening in every country, every, yeah. every continent, like yeah. Europe, US, it's happening everywhere. We talked about this a few years ago yeah. and, and we basically said like, I don't know, is it a privacy thing? And then you suggested it, that you you suggested or you heard it somewhere. It's like, you don't have to get the full return. You just can just have a for direct link for line 150. Yeah. Cause that's all that matters at the end of the day. Um, I think this is, this is a, a, one of the most welcome thing, like every broker, yeah. agent and realtor looking for. Some, some people are not going to like this, Yeah, <laughs> but we know that. Uh, yeah. But this is amazing. This is amazing for the consumers. It's a, it's a fair, fair play. It's a, it's a fair game for everyone right now. Also, I think it adds a layer of protection, right? Yeah. You're not going to be able to uh, really buy something that you really can't afford a service. Like, you, you know, people get, like you were saying, like a hype. They fall in love with something and whatever else like that. They move it forward by all means. Do you know what I mean? And it turns out that they can't actually afford it. And I'm, I'm going to be open about it. Like, if you have to get in a mortgage in a creative way on a two person mortgage. Yeah. Now the mortgage is coming up for renewal at five percent. Yeah. You couldn't even afford a two person mortgage. Yeah. How are you gonna afford a five percent? We, yeah. we are actually setting up the consumers yeah. for failure. Yeah. And we're screwing up our market. We're screwing all up at our the market, same yeah. time. You know what? From everything that we've discussed so far, it just seems like a perfect storm. Is everything about coming to happen, at once? Right? Like everything is all gathering yeah. all together. Um, so it's, I think that's going to be very interesting and I think it's going to be very good. And like you alluded to before, I think all of these changes are going to take some time to kind of wipe through, like go through, right? Yeah. I'm even thinking like two years, it might take 18 months or two years, uh, to it kind could of go be. through these changes. And, and also there could be some significant good changes may come before the election. Yeah. Keep in mind we are, we are running into election yeah. in 2025. I think they're going to have to, man, like, cause they're going to still have to buy votes, uh, in, in certain ways. And I think the interest rate uh, influencing the interest rate one way or the other could be. Because think about how, how people are going to The timing be. goes well, right? The yeah. closer the election, more rate cuts. Exactly. And I yeah. think that's what's going to happen. And they're going to show people that they're actually working with them. But yeah. everyone has a dementia, right? <laughs> I don't know if it's going to help them, but we'll leave it at that for yeah. that one. But if you, and the other thing is, uh, we talk about the condo market, uh, the new 30 amortization, the yeah. pre-con. I'm not too sure how that's going to be planned out. I think they're probably going to be implementing on resale homes as well. I think that would make more sense. I think it's just a, um, a teaser. It's a fluff, man. It's, yeah, it's, it's a teaser it, now on the pre-con. It's bullshit at the end of the day, man. I'll call it what it is, right? It's bullshit. The thing is, is that when you go to buy a pre-con, likely you're going to put 20% deposit on it anyways, Correct. right? You're going to put 20% deposit. That means you automatically can get a 30-year not, not all, Not all the builders, but some most of the builders. A lot want of the builders, yeah. especially right now. I find that they're very tight. Like uh, they, they want to be financially secure. And I think whoever they're borrowing the money from is actually asking for these approvals Absolutely. And, and whatnot Absolutely. as well. Like yeah. They're being a little bit more tight on all of these yeah. things, no, right? I understand. So like, I don't know if it's going to help. And then again, like it, if it's over a million dollars, like I had somebody bought a new uh, townhouse in like Milton and that's like $1.25 million brand new. Like you won't qualify for that if you're a first time home buyer. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So I don't know how many people it's actually going to help, but. It's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen, uh, but maybe they want to incentivize uh, builders to yeah. go and build new homes. You know what, dude, like throughout this whole thing, you, you know what's a messed up thing I found is that they didn't actually remove the two points on the stress test. Absolutely not. Yeah, they're not. Why? It, isn't that kind of wild? Like, what is it now? Seven, two? Um, it's actually some clients are qualifying at eight and a half. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, how, how is that even? That could have been the best option. Yeah. If someone is taking a five year fixed. Yeah. If you think the economy is going in the right direction, 
make it make amendment. Yeah. Like probably I think prior to 2019, if you're taking a five year phase, you qualify on the contract rate, not on a yeah. posted rate. But wouldn't that make sense though? Makes sense. To qualify on the contract rate. Because I think OSFI doesn't like the fact of taking the statistics away. They don't like it. They don't like it. But like in the in the in the spot where we are at right now, wouldn't that make the most sense? To give buyers confidence and yeah. get people more into the houses yeah. and especially if we are get, having income verification, all those things. Yeah. It, maybe, maybe it's in the pipeline. And, and especially because we're building this inventory right yeah. now. Like 60% more inventory than last year is a lot of inventory. I think they are seeing more than what they expected in terms of cooling the market. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and just to kind of get to the end of this, like, what are you seeing happening in the market from your mortgage perspective? Like, I can tell you honestly right now, from my perspective, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm already talking about it. The sales are lower, which directly impacts my business. So we're not having that many more sales. Uh, things are sluggish. People are taking more time to make decisions. Uh, how are you finding it on the mortgage side? I think in, in terms of the purchases, it has been definitely slowed down. Okay. Uh, but it's some pocket. Like I have a client, he's, they're working on a 3 million budget they're missing out on every single opportunity wow. in, in Toronto. Okay. So it depends on the area. Okay. Uh, but some areas on general, uh, it's definitely a slowdown. And now the lot of meetings are about renewals and cash flow management. What are you seeing in terms of appraisals? We talked about it last time. Yeah. We're having a lot of challenges with the pre-cons. Pre-cons. Since we spoke last time, I had a client who bought a property in Durham, a new construction, came in $350,000. Wow. And I had a client who bought a condo uh, Toronto, came yeah. in $75,000 less. Wow. And I had another client I'm working on right now in Durham as well, in Ajax, $425,000 less. Wow. Um, $425,000. So $25, uh, $1.85 million to $1.4 million. Wow. It's a little Detach. bit over $425,000. Yeah. So we are negotiating. I told a client, go and negotiate with the builder for a VTB. Yeah. So they're still in negotiation. Uh, the builder was kind enough to give them an extension. Okay. And they're working with them. They want to see the client as an approval. Yeah. So they understand the client as an approval is a market. Yeah. So they may do a VTB. Wow. Okay. At least that's a good It option. depends on the builders. So so we're you're not really seeing that on the resale side though. Not on the resale the side. The resale side is okay. The resale side is okay, but the only, only challenge on the resale side is they are not some clients are unable to sell the property to purchase a new property. Are you still seeing that a lot, man? Yeah. Where people go and buy property first and then turn around and sell it? So keep in mind, they, they could have bought the property in the end of February, early March, and getting ready to sell the house and the market shifted. Also, I guess it could be a new construction, right? Like if you bought it 18 months ago or whatever, the market has shifted quite a bit. Yeah, that's true. I actually saw a post on social media yesterday, uh, a same in sale, 1.7, they're willing to let go for 1.2. Ooh, 500K. Find Just kid. walk away for walk half away a million from. dollars. Yeah. Wow, that's, we don't have that many problems then when you we, look at that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any last comments about uh, mortgages? What people should do, man, right now? Like if people are genuinely have watched this, I think we're what, like 10, 15 minutes into this thing already. If people have genuinely watched this and they have a low interest mortgage right now, like what would you suggest for them to do? Like if they have two points and they're already tight right now, what do you think they should be doing? So... They should definitely reach out and say where the cash flow is going. Yeah. It's come to cash flow management. That's what I firmly believe in. Correct. Uh, you can go from 3%, I mean 2% to 3% by doing a refinance, talk to your lender, talk to the bank. Yeah. Uh, maybe do a cash flow. Yeah. If you don't have a cash flow, you cannot keep the property. Right. Right. I think the cash flow management is more important. Even if the renewal is coming up, talk to your mortgage agent, talk to your bank and see where the cash flow is. Okay. So that's the best way. Manage your cash flow. Basically get ahead of it. Get do, ahead of it. Yeah. Watch your numbers and get ahead of it. Before. And some clients are even kind of budget themselves. Even if you had to put a basement apartment to make $2,000 rental income, yeah. your monthly payment goes up by significant and you're paying up all the debts, but you're having a $2,000 coming out. Yeah, which kind of would make sense for them. Though. Yeah, if you want to keep all of that. If you want to keep it. And there, and there are some people actually downsizing it. I'm seeing a lot of seniors coming to me right now for a reverse mortgage. It's never been this popular. Really, eh? Yeah, reverse mortgage. Because I used to see those ads, like chip reverse mortgage. And, and I haven't done this many reverse mortgages. So I haven't had this much meetings talking about the reverse mortgages. Uh, so what happens is you could have a two hundred, three hundred dollars $300,000 line of credit. You were paying 2% interest. Yeah. Now it's 77 So seniors are on a fixed income. Yeah. Now they cannot keep up the payment. Yeah. The biggest um, application I did in terms of volume wise was $1.2 million mortgage on a reverse mortgage. Really? Yeah. So how does that work? Do they just give you that money or? Oh, it's the, how it works. The client has a secure line of credit with the bank okay. and to help the family member out. Yeah. They were trying to keep up the payment. Now yeah. they couldn't keep up the payment. 
um, they don't want they want to reside in the same property there in their 80s. Yeah. Uh, the only way to do that is a reverse mortgage and no payment. So, 1.2 million dollars and interest accumulates. Yeah. And uh, they don't make any payment. So when they sell the house or when they decease, the bank will sell the house and give the rest. Wow. So basically, if they need that amount, amount of money, like 1.1, they're going to give it to them. So let's say they have it for three years. Yeah. 1.1 1. 1 go to 1.3. Yeah. So let's say house sold for 2 million. Yeah. The state will get 700,000. Wow. So they basically, there's no payments on it. No I'm just trying to understand it. it. So basically, if you got, say, a million dollars out of them, like uh, they'll give you the cash or whatever. Absolutely. And then you're not really making any payments you don't make to any it, payments. but it accrues interest on it. Exactly. Like so, a mortgage. Yeah. So at the end of the three years or five years or 10 years or whatever that term is, they're going to just basically sell the house and take all of the money, including interest back out. Okay. And the, and the rest of the proceed will go to the So their profit is basically just delayed. But they're exactly. probably, what's their interest rates? Uh, it's similar to the mortgage rate right okay. now, like around six and a half to seven and a half percent, depends on the term you choose. Yeah. I just wonder for a lender, how could that be like profitable? They don't lend on a high loan to value. Okay. So how it works is the older you are, the yeah. more money you get. Okay. So, so it's very secure. Very like they secure. know they're getting their they money. They do the appraisal. They want to make sure like they don't go above 55 percent of wow. the property value. Wow. But they want to make sure like the life expectancy is growing up. Yeah. So they want to make sure like they, they don't want to kick them out of the I house see. either. Well. So it's a low loan to value. Wow. It's not for everyone. It's okay. for the seniors who is within, like, let's say someone has a million dollar property, have a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollar line of credit or mortgage. Yeah. They kind of keep up the payment. They don't want to move in with the family. They want to keep it, keep living in the property. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's a really cool option. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of those happening. Right? Wow. Okay. Thank you so much Thank for your you. time. Thanks for coming in. Uh, guys, if you guys have any questions about what's going on in the mortgage market, I would strongly recommend you guys contact Vern. We always have his contact information whenever he does videos with us at the bottom. So please reach out to him. And if you guys know that you are locked into a low rate mortgage, I would strongly consider uh, you guys to, like Varen said, to look at your numbers, see where your money is going out, and then possibly call him and go over a strategy. So if you guys have to renew or when that renewal comes up, at least you're not going to have a complete payment shop on the spot trying to figure out what you're going to do. At least try to come up with that plan sooner. As I've already alluded that the inventory is already getting really high. So if you are going to be in payment shock and know that you can't make that payment and you're going to have to enter the market, you better start talking to a realtor and a mortgage person sooner than later to figure out where the sweet spot may be for you to actually get in and possibly get out with something. Until next time, guys, remember one thing, get Cabani, get sold. Sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sold. Sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sold. Sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sold. Sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sold.